Jason Lee Podcast. All right, we're back for our new episode of the Jason Lee Podcast. <laughs> this fake laughter applause just <laughs> never gets old. It feels great to be back. Listen, I am so happy to be back in Los Angeles. Um, I took a trip recently to Miami. You can't go to Miami for one day or two days. That just, like, you can do a pop in and out of New York because once you get through all the traffic, taxis, uh, tourism, homeless, snow, rain, police, uh, attempted robberies. Like once you can get through all that in New York, you're ready to get out of there anyway. Maybe get hook at Pergola, but you know Miami, you have to be there for at least more than one day. I was there for two days, and I went specifically to go and support my friend Floyd Mayweather. You may have heard of him; he's a boxer. He's actually the boxing champ, one of the greatest boxers, if not the greatest boxer to ever live. Went down there to Miami to support him in the fight. He was fighting Gotti. Now, I heard Gotti. I had seen the promo. I had posted it. I didn't really think about he was fighting the descendant of a mob boss, of somebody who's actually had people killed, who's alleged, not even allegedly, because he went to jail for all that stuff, <laughs> ended up dying. Anyway, he fought the grandson of John Gotti, the mob guy from New York City, a fellow Italian like myself. Well, um, this was a partnership between Floyd Mayweather and the Zeus Network. Now, Zeus is one of our partners in terms of uh, advertising partners at Hollywood Unlocked. I've done a show over there called Bobby Lights, I Love You Purr. I, I produced um, the, the conversation with Roland Ray, where Ray was rolling around him in the wheelchair. I thought that was really entertaining. I also hosted a couple of the reunions, the baddies. Um, after doing that, I, I did the Bobby Lights, I Love You Purr and decided I was not a reunion host, at least not on the Zeus Network, and haven't hosted any other reunions over there. Uh, it was a partnership that I thought was just about streaming the fight. I didn't know that it was a full-fledged production behind the scenes. So I wanted to kind of give everybody an update on that, but I think I'm going to, I got a whole full segment on that. Yeah. Because uh, it's <laughs> been a lot. But I went to Miami, and I have to tell you, I want to give a shout out to Dave Grutman from the Grutman hospitality group dave grutman owns live nightclub he owns swan he owns gecko he owns komodo he owns a whole bunch of restaurants there and around the country he uh owns a lot of uh clubs i think he even owns story i don't know if he owns story but i know he owns live nightclub which is the best club in miami the reason why i'm bringing this up is because miami understands hospitality uh and los angeles does not this city is ghetto when it comes to nightlife it's ghetto when it comes to how it handles uh, restaurants and guests. And I'm not even talking as a VIP. I'm talking as somebody that just goes out and spends money. And when I think about how much money is being spent at restaurants, when you think about it, a thousand dollar dinner or a $1,500 dinner, or even a $500 dinner for a, for a normal working class person, that is a lot of money. And so the experience should match how much you pay. And I'm thinking of ways of, of highlighting the best restaurants and best nightclubs to visit around the country or around the world as I experience them, just on a personal level, because I just feel like the difference between Miami nightlife, Miami hospitality, and here, night and day. And I just feel like some of y'all, some of y'all here in LA need to be put on blast. Like that one club I went to and I told them, I know y'all selling drugs in the club and got guns in here. And if y'all sleep, keep playing with my money, I'm gonna tell people. Trying to sell me and my people drugs. Okay, well anyway, that's that was my weekend. I'm just gonna get straight to it. Um, it's the tea with Jason Lee. I want to give a shout out to the whole Facebook community because I know we're at almost at a million followers. And I know that all of our clips are going viral on Facebook. I know YouTube, I don't know what's going on with that algorithm. The algorithm at YouTube is on crack. So if you're not watching this on Facebook, go over there to YouTube and tell your cousins to get it together. And I will say, um, I saw one video we posted yesterday had 197,000 views already in 17 hours on Facebook which means to tell me that I'm loving Facebook more. So, hey, Facebook community. Uh, but I already started this and told you this weekend that I was in Miami for the Floyd Mayweather and Gotti 3 uh, fight. Floyd Mayweather <laughs> and Gotti 3, uh, John Gotti's <laughs> grandson, got into a fight. Uh, well, they got into, they had an exhibition match down in Miami. Uh, and the whole thing was, it was what it was. I, I'm not going to call it ghetto just yet. I'm going to lay it out for you. And at the end, I'm going to let y'all determine what it was. This was a partnership that Floyd uh, created with the Zeus Network to bring uh, boxing ex exhibitions live around the world via live stream. Now, I will tell you, lots of people were there. Uh, Zeus produced this fight, and there were performances 
that I never would have thought I would see on a Floyd Mayweather fight. And so in my mind, I had to really understand. I had to, I had to dissect this all. When you go to a Floyd Mayweather fight in Vegas at the MGM, it's very prestigious. It is a very big deal. These fights are typically title fights because Floyd has been the champ, 50 and 0. He's never lost. So when you go to the fight, you know, you can see Tyler Perry, you can see Jennifer Lopez, LeBron James, Tyler Perry. All the all the most prestigious people in the industry are there. And those tickets around the 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 ring, uh, Cost they could cost anywhere from a hundred thousand dollars up down whatever I mean it's it's a lot of money and so to be on the floor to be ringside to get close to the ring to get a photo with the ring that means you have to have spent a whole bunch of money this was not that this was an exhibition fight there was no Jennifer Lopez there was no LeBron there was no Diddy no Denzel nobody was there I was there and Natalie Nunn was there jo uh, Bobby Lights was ringside Bobby Lights was beyond ringside so you know when somebody as gay as Bobby Lights is that close to the ring you know damn well it ain't no Floyd Mayweather fight but whatever shout out to Bobby and his gay ass screaming hey bitch hey bitch and I was like I'm not gay tonight this is a fight <laughs> Bobby and Bobby was like bitch we're gay I said let's be gay at the after party everybody was laughing but anyway shout out to Bobby this was a Zeus Network partnership with Floyd now I didn't talk to Floyd about what this partnership looked like nor have I talked to Floyd after the fight about the fight. Uh, but I will say it was more than what I thought it was. I thought it was Zeus just streams it on Zeus Network as a way of elevating their brand and reaching different consumers and being able to really diversify the type of content they had on Zeus. That's what I thought because I didn't go to the last one. I knew that it was uh, Zoom, uh, uh, not Zoom, but um, live stream on Zeus or whatever. Actually being there behind the scenes, a couple things I want to tell you all. If this was a real situation. Everything that you saw unfold on TV was real. This was not scripted, at least not the violence part. And I'm going to get to that in a minute. This was a real situation because I spent a lot of time there before the fight and I spent a, lot, a little bit of time there after the fight and I'll get into why. Now, this was a, what I would look at is this was a live event happening for you all to watch a boxing match and then in and around it they were also filming Jocelyn Hernandez's show and then Blueface and Krishan were also there filming so there was a lot of filming going on while they were there as Zeus Network content creators should be filming however I did not believe that Floyd Mayweather would ever allow that type of reality show content to be created in his world because it is so prestigious in terms of his life in boxing and who he is to the sport. So it was interesting to see that. There was a moment where I was backstage having a conversation with Blueface and Krishan. Blueface and Krishan, first of all, were getting along this day, which was great. But Krishan looked really cute. She had her belly hanging out. She was very happy. She appeared to be sober. He appeared to be sober. And he actually said as much as we post him on Hollywood Unlocked that they should be getting, they should be on payroll. I said, absolutely not. <laughs> Um, we actually don't want to post you, but you guys do so much fuck shit that we have to post you. And they kind of laughed about it. But anyway, it was good seeing them. But they were filming. Jocelyn's filming. There was a moment where Jocelyn walked up to me and everybody knows that I don't care for Jocelyn. She's not. I'm not a fan of her. Since one day we posted on Hollywood Unlock, she called me saying she would slap me. And I told her that was the day she would either die or be in prison <laughs> or in a cage where she belongs. Well, anyway, she walked up to me and she said some slick shit and the whole cameras were filming. And I was like, y'all not putting this on Zeus. It's not for reality TV. I'm not I'm not participating in that. And then she walked away. And I remember looking in her face and thinking, is she high on something? Is she drunk? Because she had this real like desperation type look in her face like she had been dropped off in the middle of a highway in the middle of a night and didn't know where she was um and the fact that she was having this conversation with me with that maddie wig i just felt like she clearly has lost her mind but she looked like she was looking for trouble this was this was before the fight even took place she looked like she was looking for trouble she looked like trouble she looked like she had been in trouble and she was looking for trouble. Anyway, I went back in uh, Floyd's room. You know, there were lots of people in there. Again, I've never been in one of Floyd's rooms where there's been a hundred something people in there. It's usually his cut man. It's usually a couple members from the team, his assistant. Very, very small group of people. Maybe his girls, his kids. But like to have a hundred, about a hundred people in there, it was just, it was different. So I knew the night was going to be different then. I went outside to my, my, my seat. I had ringside seats. And uh, when I got there, there were people in them. So I had to get into a conversation about getting out of my seat. And that took a while to get them out. Finally, they got out of my seat, and then the fight happened. Now, what I will say is watching the fight, I was sat in the Gotti section. So all the people sitting behind me 
were Italians who were screaming the most disrespectful things to Floyd uh and you know whatever but it's boxing so you kind of look at it like okay it's what it is i I experienced this with conor mcgregor where they were yelling monkey they were doing all kind of crazy things when we went over to london oh yeah the irish had showed up and were screaming the most vile things and then uh it was it was a lot but but in watching it there was all this energy going on where people were screaming and yelling for the fight what i saw happen was a couple things when floyd got in the ring now to watch floyd box if you're a boxing fan and you're a fan of floyd mayweather you know that floyd will typically go and you know fill his uh, opponent out until about the third round then the third round once he's figured the opponent out he then beats the shit out of him floyd came into the ring fighting this was not just an exhibition fight actually floyd put on a good fight he was actually landing a lot of punches and and i thought was just creating damage to this guy but the guy was holding his own when it got to the round where it got wild, uh, the Floyd had hit him in what Gotti had said was above on the top of the head, which is against the rules of boxing. Floyd had punched him, and I guess in his mind he felt like he violated the rules. The guy who was an MMA fighter then started fighting in a way that was more MMA than boxing, and the and the ref tried to talk to him. He wouldn't listen, so he stopped the fight. Once he stopped the fight. Floyd and the guy still wanted to keep fighting. Then the guy kept fighting anyway, and that's when Floyd's team thought he was doing too much and jumped in. Now, I'm going to back all the way up and lay out all of the chaos. I just wanted to sum it up for you real quick, but I'm going to start where all the chaos began. Because it wasn't just the fact that Floyd even did this fight with the Zeus Network and brought some of their animals into his playground. Um, it was the fact that some of these performances probably should have never even happened either. First, I'm going to show you Jocelyn performing. I'm going to talk over the track because there's no way in hell that I would play a portion of her song <laughs> on my platform. This is Jocelyn gyrating her hips and doing some kind of rodeo pose. Now, I won't lie, I kind of like her top, and I like the jacket that she should have had covering her. Um, and she was trying to give her best rendition of what Cardi B would do if she wasn't a star. Because we all know that Jocelyn wants to be Cardi B, or she's mad that Cardi has the career that she's never going to get. But either way, that was Jocelyn's star-studded performance at the Floyd Mayweather fight. And then, of course... My favorites, Krishan and Blue, they took the stage and they came out with all the baddies. Now take a look as I talk over their performance. This is a very pregnant Krishan and her baddie dancers and her baby daddy. Well, I'll just say allegedly. Because allegedly. Because he said it ain't his. <laughs> performing. By the way, Blueface looked really good. I don't care what any of y'all say. I, I'm a fan of Blueface. That's Natalie Nunn in her one piece jumpsuit making sure she gets some content. Uh, that's not Amber Rose. That's one of the baddies right there with the bald head. And those are all the baddies, and they were all being bad. Well, the crowd wasn't feeling them too much, uh, and the crowd was, you know, there clearly for the Floyd Mayweather fight, but also the way that Floyd had set up the fight is he had some of the biggest Latin artists Scheduled to perform after the fight. And I took a picture with a couple of the people. This is this is my picture of me and my best Spanish boy band attempt. Now, that's Ozuna and that's Mikey Towers or Mike Towers. I still don't know if it's Mike or Mikey. Either way, I will say Mike Towers, I was not ready to meet you. I don't know, Kalo K, if you can even <laughs> translate this. But I have been looking at Mike Towers on Instagram because he is He's beautiful. I don't know if he's Dominican or Puerto Rican. He's fine as hell. But I had been looking at his Instagram. I had seen him on a billboard somewhere. And I remember saying to myself, like, damn, he's cute. And then he was there talking. And they were all talking in Spanish. Um, and it was some other artists, too. Uh, uh, and I didn't know who they were. Of course, I text, I took a picture of him and texted him to Cardi. And she's breaking down who they all were. Mm -hmm. But what I will tell you is I do think in Spanish they were saying I look like Daddy Yankee. Because they were all <laughs> laughing and pointing at me. And they said, Daddy Yankee. That's the only thing I understood. But either way, it was good meeting them. And so now I'm, I'm connected to my Latinos. Uh, as well. Anyway, back to the fight. So they got in the fight. Fight got hectic. I'm going to fast forward through all that and get straight to the T. The fight was stopped by the ref. Once the fight stopped, I think Floyd's team saw him continue to attack Floyd 
And then that's when all hell broke loose. I'm going to see if I have a video here to show you. Do we have a video? Roll it. Now, I was sitting right there far left in the front row with all my jewelry on and no security when all that happened. And I quietly tucked my chain <laughs> and slid the fuck up out of there. Because those of you online that saw that and thought that that was all a stunt or fake, that was real. And that last video, as you can see, they were fighting all the way out the ring to the room. And then the fight continued for another 45 minutes backstage fights in the hallway fights in the driveway fights towards the locker rooms you couldn't come we had it we were in floyd's room with security holding the door shut because people were trying to get in to keep fighting then security were leaving out of floyd's room to go out and fight some more now floyd's dj dj bling who's a friend of ours here even wanted some of the action and of course they had to film it bling <laughs> look <laughs> Okay, well, Floyd, he also boxes, too. Uh, people online, we put it on Hollywood Lock. They were calling him Mickey Mouse. Either way, <laughs> I don't know. Bling wanted a piece of Gotti as well. He he forgot that he was also part of the mafia. They told Bling, I think, allegedly, that they would gut him. Um, and, oh. and, the, and the Gotti people were using words like, we will murder you. They weren't saying, I'll kill you, I'll shoot you. They were saying, I'll murder you. So, like, they put a cap emphasis on the M to, I'll murder you. Um, then... If that wasn't enough, Jocelyn, who we just saw gyrating on the stage, shaking her best coconut, <laughs> went back there and got into a fight with the Cabernet contestant Big Lex. Now, Big Lex, Big Lex, as I understand, is the one that said double homicide, right? That's that. But that's what people are saying. I don't watch this show. I don't know. That. This is the girl who said something about the girl that had the abortion with the twins had a double homicide. Well, anyway. <laughs> It looked like a double homicide when she got her hands on her. I'm going to show you this video, and if I don't see what I knew I saw on everything, I'm going to tell you what actually happened. Take a look. That was a man punching that woman on the way out. I don't know if you saw that. And on top of that, Jocelyn slapped the security guard three times. And there were men kicking the woman on the floor. 
first and foremost, this is why, first of all, she better than me. One, I ever get attacked like that in public, I'm telling y'all right now on camera, you can use this in court, somebody's gonna die. Because you're not gonna beat me like that in public on a camera and get away with it. Number two, um, I think it was disgusting. Um, I think it was, not only was it disgusting, but it was absolutely disrespectful to the sport of boxing, disrespectful to Floyd Mayweather. And I don't know if it's Zeus who's responsible. I don't know if it's Jocelyn who's responsible. I don't know if it's everybody who's responsible. But whoever created that environment where that type of animalistic behavior could happen, it was absolutely wrong. I love Zeus Network. They're great partners of ours in the, on the advertising side, and we support the fact that there's a black man at the helm of that, Lemuel, who I'm going to invite here on my podcast next week to have a conversation. But... Uh, this was beyond anything I've ever seen on Love & Hip Hop or anything anywhere on any reality television that is acceptable reality TV for right now, especially for those involving us. Um, this is exactly what people say black people are. This is exactly how we all get defined when we're all trying to partner with brands and evolve past narratives that have been creative. This brings us all the way back. I had conversations with so many culture leaders over the past weekend, people calling me, asking me my thoughts because they know I'm close to Zeus, they know I'm close to Floyd. And it's very uncomfortable to be put in a position where you support both parties and love both parties, but now have to actually keep it real. This was disgusting. And I'm going to go back a little further. I'm 45 years old. This is exactly how Tupac Shakur died. Tupac Shakur went to a Mike Tyson fight he got into a situation with somebody and afterwards he was murdered as a result of that altercation. There were so many fights that happened that you did not see. Floyd's grandson was ringside. Floyd's children were ringside. There were other kids there. There were investors, kids there. There were people that were there to watch a concert from all those Latin artists I show you that didn't happen. All meanwhile, cameras are rolling in this reality show. They turned a Floyd Mayweather exhibition fight into a reality show. Um, now, I wouldn't have a problem with that if it was tasteful. And I know there's a lot of criticism right now around Zeus Network and whether or not um, what they do is appropriate, given that there is so much negativity impacting the culture as a result of their content. Now, I understand those of us that are conflicted. On one hand, it's a black man profiting from the lifestyle that some people in our culture live because this is a lifestyle of a lot of our people that we know in different communities. But then there's the argument that we don't get out of that type of lifestyle and environment if we don't do better because to know better is to do better. And we know a grown woman in her 60s like Jocelyn running around punching everybody that she can swing her nasty little dirty hands at uh, uh, is unacceptable. I have to also say, I talked to her husband. I've known her husband, Ballistic. I don't know if it's her husband or fiance, but Ballistic Beats, who's a producer also on Love & Hip Hop. And, you know, he's somebody that I consider a friend. I like Ballistic. I've known him before he was with Jocelyn. He's a respectable, uh, professional, um, um, uh, talented producer who... I knew before I did Wild and Out, before I did Love and Help Out, before I did Hollywood Unlocked, he was somebody that used to always tell me he believed in me. And he's he's a friend of mine. We had a good conversation there. And he told me he'd be telling Jocelyn she need to chill or whatever because he knows that we don't get along. And it's so unfortunate that I have to criticize his partner because I know it puts him in a weird situation like I'm in with Zeus and, and Floyd. But like, you're better than her. You're better than being around something like that. I know you guys are getting your money, but there ain't no money worth me laying with somebody as vile as that woman. She is disgusting. I hope that she has her citizenship because if she doesn't, she needs to be deported back to whatever fucking land she came from. I think she's from Puerto Rico. Then I think they need to take Puerto Rico off the US map and let that whole island become its own country and put her back in it. I, I'm if, if whoever wants to run for president, I don't care if you're a Republican or a Democrat, if you're willing to extradite not extradite. If you're willing to ship Jocelyn Hernandez back to her land and make that its own country, I will vote for you. I will run your campaign because that <laughs> is what my interest is right now. It was a disgrace. It was uh, and put up her 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 arrest record, her picture. This is exactly the foolishness Halloween face costume ass makeup she had on that that costume makeup is beyond CVS. You got that at a Party City store. You look a mess. That is exactly how you looked all night before the fight. We're not going to blame this on a washover at the jailhouse. They should have kept you in there. They say you may be out. You need to go back. You need to. They, they need to violate you. I should press charges of you for your breath that you that I smelled as you were yelling at me because it, it was it was musty. Uh, now they they said that she got hit with four charges, three counts of battery, plus trespassing and resisting arrest with violence. Now. And on top of that, your speech impediment really annoys me. Okay, 
What did you guys think of the whole night as you watched it unfold? I knew it was problematic when usually when Floyd fights, it's like, oh, who won, who lost, any type of fight. So the fact that I didn't know who won the fight, but I knew about Jocelyn and Blueface and Krishan, everyone jumping up, like, it was problematic from start to finish. Yeah, for me, Floyd is, one, so kind. And then two, he's the epitome of, like, wealth and fashion and beautiful women and beautiful cars, opulent homes, talent. And to have it tarnished with this ratchet reality ghetto bullshit is crazy to me. And furthermore, like when when you attach your name to Floyd, you have a world stage. And this is what you decided to put forward to the world. And like you said, it's a tarnishment on people of color. It's disgusting. And I, I hope I hope he never does anything like this again because whatever he was paid, I don't think it was worth it. But he fought with, or he put the sh fight on Zeus before, and this didn't happen, right? Well, was in London. You no, know, it didn't happen. I don't know what happened behind the stage because I don't I don't watch all the shows. But I will say this was definitely a win for Zeus because yes. it did put them on a world stage. And I I'm shout out to Lemuel. I'm 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 proud of your success. Uh, as an individual, as an entrepreneur, because I feel like anybody black who's following their dreams and creating whatever they want to create is is phenomenal when you can reach those numbers. But but heavy is the head that wears the crown. And when you are at the helm of a network and you're at the helm of the boxing world, because Floyd is not just a boxer. He's not just a promoter. He is the he's the epitome of excellence in, in the sport. He is the Beyonce of of athletics. Mm -hmm. I, you know, I know he's going to probably say, don't call me that because I'm Floyd Mayweather, but you know what I mean? He's the Beyonce of, of sports. And I have such a high level of respect for Floyd. It goes beyond just sports. It's him as a father. It's him as a provider. It's him as a friend. It's him as a brother. And I, I won't lie, I was extremely disappointed that that this was even allowed. I, I'm not saying that Floyd allowed it because Floyd has people around him and I didn't see the normal people who were there at his fights, but whoever was around him that allowed this to happen... It's just, it's just, it's crazy. I would have never thought I'd seen that. I I would have never come to the fight if I knew that that's what it was going to be. Now, let me first start by saying what happened in the ring as it relates to all the chaos. Once the referee stopped the fight and people kept trying to fight, Floyd's people had to do what they were supposed to do. So yeah. containing the problem in the fight, making sure the champ was on the side, you know, they were swinging at, if you saw that at the beginning, the guy swung at Badu, which is one of Floyd's huge securities. Uh, and, you know, that's, that's what it is. But once that happen for that then to spill into the arena and backstage put a lot of people's safety at risk there should be lots of lawsuits as a result of this i don't know that floyd is liable for that because floyd didn't do anything but if you promoted the fight if you're airing the fight if you're renting the venue or whatever there's some certain liabilities i would assume people getting punched in the face i don't know if there's the other video of the fight, uh, do we have the other video of the fight with the security? Take a look at this fight that was captured by one of the one of the sponsors security fighting other people who were there at the venue. Take a look. Oh my God. The sponsor security got into a fight. The guy named Limitless, that was his security. You could see him. You don't know who he is, but you could see him pulling the security off. And again, like, how do you sponsor and pay for a fight and then your security become a part of the problem? Security's job is to secure, to stop fights, to stop threats, to, to mitigate risk. These people continue to go on. And I will tell you, one of Floyd's security actually tried to check me. This is a new person. This isn't somebody that's been around for a long time, but tried to check me for not interviewing his family member on my show in the midst of all. So all the chaos is happening. Fights are happening. People are holding the doors. Floyd's trying to get everything under control. 
pure chaos. The security is checking me about why I haven't interviewed his cousin on my show. Well, not only is your cousin never coming on my show, but your cousin won't even be talked about on Hollywood Unlocked anymore. And like I told you, don't ever press me about nothing that I do over here. And in fact, I am going to have a conversation with the champ because if he can't keep his gorilla in a cage and not talking to me, then I won't be around. I don't know who the fuck people think they are or who I am, but I'm at a point in my life and career where I'm 45 years old, completely unbothered, financially secure, and could stay at home all day and not give two shits about a fight, a bad girl, a bad boy, or any other motherfucking uh, circus animal that wants to run up on me because I won't do an interview with somebody that doesn't meet the criteria for my platform. Now, I know I've said a mouthful. You can digest all this later, okay? <laughs> Along with the rest of us watching at home, uh, Claudia Jordan was somewhere watching and the cocktail with Queen must have had too much cocktails because she actually went on and said this about Jocelyn. She said, Jocelyn Hernandez is the female blue face of pretend rap. <laughs> oh my God. I love Claudia. Hold on. Oh God, I love Claudia. It's the shade for me. Again, I've said this about you, Claudia. You like to throw rocks and hide your hand, or you like to blow up the internet and say, oh, why are they being messy? She knew exactly what she was doing, and she, she stood on that one. Uh, I think uh, it's not pretend rapping again. Blueface does what E-40 does, but Jocelyn is, she's just talentless and just, she's just, she's literally like, she's what crack looks like in human form. Oh my god! Oh my god! Like if crack cocaine had a heartbeat, <laughs> put the put the uh, picture up. She's the embodiment of crack. that. <laughs> that I cannot believe that that's from the same mm. night though. That that <laughs> that. Uh. <laughs> crack in human form. That. <laughs> Jocelyn, nobody likes you. Nobody likes you. You're a mean, nasty woman. I hope you go to prison. I hope they find more charges for you. It's stand your ground in, in Florida. And if somebody pulls out a gun and kills you dead in the middle of the street, I'm going to put it on Hollywood Unlock. I'm going to put your funeral on there. I'm going to put the procession. There'll be probably be two cars, probably two station wagons at best, maybe a fucking donkey. You're, you're, you're not... <laughs> ever going to be respected you're a mother you recently just is this whole diatribe about how you change you ain't changed you're trash you're gonna always be trash and trash needs to be dumped dumped in a ditch somewhere in the back of a fucking receptacle bin i don't know you're you're just disgusting i think anything that affiliates it with that is disgusting i will tell you this good luck with nothing nothing and i hope that i hope that floyd never allows for this circus act to happen again in his in his in his uh world. I mean, to be around the the best boxer in the world, the one of the richest athletes in the world, somebody who's broken every record, who came from a one bedroom apartment with seven people living in it with a mom addicted to drugs, a father who was in jail, to be able to raise his four children, to be able to provide for them and everybody around them and be one of the best friends that anybody could ask for. How dare you tarnish his legacy? with your foolishness because all of you uneducated, untalented, disrespectful, disgusting pig crack fiends of people would actually come around and act like you would dance for a Scooby snack. You're disgusting, <laughs> all of you. Pitiful, pathetic, disgusting human beings. And you all deserve to be locked away. I would tell you right this, to tell you like this, I thank God all of you respect me or afraid of me or whatever you are and didn't touch me because had you touched me every single day, I would be online until you go to prison. I would I would call Ron DeSantis. I'd probably, I honestly, I hate Ron DeSantis. I think he's a pig, but I like him more than you. I would have actually done a deal to, <laughs> to run his campaign to put you in prison. Ron DeSantis, if you... Ron DeSantis, if you're listening, if you're willing to take Jocelyn Hernandez and put her on a banana boat and send her right back to fuck wherever she came from and then dissect Puerto Rico from the United States, I'll vote for you. That's how much I hate you. <laughs> I ain't voting for you, I'm just saying. But, but that's the, how much I own. The like fact you. that you did not bring security is wild to me because you bring security everywhere usually. I don't never need to bring security around Floyd Mayweather because that's my best friend and his security usually- They were busy fighting. But I don't think he expected for the all the cages to be unlocked at the same time. Like I really don't. That's really what happened. If you think about a circus, yeah, or, or, or no, a zoo. 
Now, I know the Gotti said zoo when she talked about money yaya and that she really wanted to call her a monkey because that was race, racial undertones. We saw that and she said she's going to get her two to three years or whatever. But, you know, um, it literally was like if you walked into a zoo and every cage would, eh, wait, where's that? <laughs> and then every door opened and every animal ran out to see each other at the same time. That's literally what happened. Yeah. Yeah. You know, I have security when I go out or I have my gun on me or anything like that. But now I realize when I do start going to different places, if I'm going to be out and about with the public, I'm going to make sure I'm good. I mean, but you know, that, that gets costly too. Mm -hmm. So maybe I just won't go. All right. <laughs> uh, enough with that. Nene was at the fight. Now I ran into Nene Leaks. And this is the man she was dating that they said she took from his wife. I like him. I like his shiny head and all his suits. He still owes me a suit. I don't know if I'm going to get the suit anymore because <laughs> Nene and him broke up. Now, we broke the news. Um, and I'll tell you how I found out. Because Nene, when I was in Floyd's room at the fight that I just told you about with all the zoo animals, when she walked in the room, she walked in with this, I want to be a city girl and drop it low look. <laughs> I don't know what it was. I just, I have... What I does have, that mean? She I had, had the titties out? Well, I had the power of discernment. No, her titties weren't out, but she just had that, like, I'm here to be a bad girl look. Not mm. bad girl like the animals, but mm. she had the I'm I'm outside look, mm. you know? City girl energy. She had the city girl energy. So when I saw her, I walked up to her, I said, where your man at? Because every time I've seen Nene lately, she's been what with up? her man. And she said, uh, 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 I said, you're single. I knew it. <laughs> and she confirmed that she's single. And uh, now... A year ago, we broke the news that her African boo, his name is Nayan Sela Siowa. I don't know how to say that. Anyway, they ain't together no more. Let me show you a picture of them in happier times. This is a picture where they were booed up. This is probably at the Lanithia Lounge uh, where we would frequent. She has great hookah, good food, strong drink. She's a great host, nice music, and a bomb DJ. And the security is even kind of cute. Well... <laughs> Uh, they were spotted together back in 2021 in Miami. Three days after that, Nene's husband, Greg, died of colon cancer. She went through a, an extreme amount of hate online where people were saying it was too soon for her to move on. But you can't judge people's grief. grief. And I thought she handled the end of her relationship with Greg with class. I thought she did, you know, she handled whatever she, she, I, I didn't have a problem with the way she handled it, but a lot of you online did. Um, and remember, uh, it came out later that Nini said that Greg had told her that she had the blessing to see other people knowing that he was dying and she was caring for him at the time. Now, the the guy, I'm going to call him Nyan, he was still married to his wife, Malomin Tia Siowa. They was just Africans. They, these are just African names. <laughs> By the way, I really like him. I like him. He's a really nice, respectable, upstanding, classy man. He's a, he's a classy man. I, I like him. So let me say that. She she filed a lawsuit against Nene, alleging that she broke up the marriage with the affair and that they were having an affair. And I'm going to say allegedly. Allegedly. Okay. She was asking for $110,000 for emotional distress, mental anguish, and loss of affection. Can you sue for that? You can sue for anything, I guess. Mm -hmm. You can sue because somebody giving your dick to somebody else? <laughs> Then I got some losses. I was the statute of limitations on that because I got some losses. <laughs> Just line them up. But but either way, you know, they didn't work out. And so now Nini's out here. Now, I did hear some side chatter that she might be talking to somebody else. Nini, I know you told me not to say anything, but I, I had told you to your face, unlike I told Tamar. Hi, Tamar. I know I owe you a text back. I love you. I know you're mad at me, but you'll be okay. Um, <laughs> what? <laughs> This is why people call me shady, huh? Mm -hmm. But it's funny. It's funny. It's funny. I mean, this that is what it's spill. No, I'm like, everybody know I love Tamar. Yeah. She mad at me because I had to, you know, she said Candy wore fake <laughs> designer clothes. And you said I'm But shy. the thing about it is when these celebrities send me so much tea on each other and then I forget when I can say and when I can't. Stop sending me the tea if y'all don't want the tea to be spilled. I'm a teacup short and stout. Well, I ain't stout no more, but bitch, I still <laughs> pours it. I still pours it. Well, anyway, uh, Nene... I heard some side chat that she might be talking to somebody else, but she really didn't get into it. But she made it clear she is single. And so she's in these streets. And I told her to her face. She said, oh, Jason, you ain't got to say nothing. I said, I'm telling you right now, Nene, I'm telling you right now, it's coming out. It's coming out. <laughs> I'm going to I'm gonna put that on my phone. <laughs> and then when I when the um, tea starts to be spilled, I'm going to just play it like, <laughs> <laughs> so they know. <laughs> what do y'all think? Should I have said anything? I think you can say what you want. People know who you are. So. That part. They know what you do. 
Right. Yeah. They know what it's you do. It's nothing new, so. <laughs> it's the business you're in. But here's what I don't understand, because I've since said, like, I'm not going to the Essence Festival this year. I'm not supporting. I'm not, like, I'm over it. I, I, I like the owner of Essence, uh, 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 Richie Lou. He's an amazing black man, black entrepreneur. Love him. I love his family, Miata Masa. Love them. They are family. But I'm mad at Essence right now because, you know, those of you that know, people have said that I have a problem uh, with black women and I just don't get that. And I also don't feel I need to be disingenuous by running around saying, I love the black woman every five minutes to make all the black women believe. The black women who are watching this show, who know me and love me, they y'all know you feel me up and you know I love you too. Uh, and I love black women. I love women. I love people. But I also don't like some black women. I don't like some white women. Some days I don't like a Croatian woman. Sometimes I don't <laughs> like trans. I don't like gays. Uh, I don't like white folks, black folks, polka dots. The Russians tried to kill me once. I don't fuck with Africans sometimes. Like I offend a lot of people and I'm tired of constantly having to defend myself with this whole black woman thing. But, you know, on the Amanda Sills podcast, I gave this woman grace. But since, Amanda, you didn't air it in time, I'm going to go ahead and say it. She called me and told me, the CEO of Essence called me and said she, she texted me and said that she wanted to um, work with me on fixing my relationship with black women and wanted to understand why I had a problem with black women. And because I respected her so much, uh, her name is Caroline. Uh, she's an African woman uh, and very, very pro-black. Uh, but she's the CEO, not the founder owner like I am. And she had a conversation with me I thought was boss to boss and how we can figure this out. And she basically told me that Essence had banned me. I didn't even know that I was banned from Essence. I thought me and Essence was cool because I'm cool with the owner. And I Look, if you don't like me, don't even act like you like me. Just stay the fuck away from me. But I've been to Essence headquarters, met with Richie Lou. He was going to invest in Hollywood on Live. We were talking about how to work together. I've gone to Essence Festival. All these things. I thought I was cool with Essence. Well, she told me that this, that she wanted to have this conversation with me, but then told me that I, had, I, I guess I said, allegedly was kind of like blackballed from Essence, who speaks predominantly to black women. So I said to her, let's have the conversation, but let's have the conversation about how Essence canceled me. Because I don't believe in cancel culture. I don't believe that white folks should be canceled. But I really don't believe that black folks should be canceled. And I'm a part of culture. But then let's also talk about this perceived issue. I think the issue that I have now is that the CEO of Essence, and we're talking about a black woman who loves me, who knew I was going to spill her tea and still my friend, <laughs> uh, and who supports me and who I support, um, she listened to gossip. And she actually allowed it to enter the space of having a conversation with another boss. And that to me is is is, is kind of tricky because as black people, we're often told that we are the sum of one mistake. If you go to prison, you're oh, you're no good to society. And the and for a man to get out, a black man to get out, already have the world even before going in stacked against him, to then get out and be marginalized and vilified as this thing that is useless. It's almost like if I threw a drink on Love and Hip Hop eight years ago, you're still talking about the drink. Like White folks don't have those problems. And I felt some type of way about her, but that interview will come out hopefully in July and you'll be able to know more about it. And the reason why I bring that up is I think about the Ninis or the Rihannas or the Tiffany's or the black women or even the women that work for me that I have support for, from and for. I think about this narrative when I do my job, tying it back to where I was going, of is this messy? It is my job. It's my job to talk about the mess, whether you're a black woman, a white woman, a Croatian woman, a trans, a gay, a straight, a, a, a dwarf. Um, Caught yourself. <laughs> I did. I'm getting better. So I hope, hopefully, this conversation that Essence wants to have, because now that you text me and started it, Caroline, you, it's either going to happen in... It's going to happen or it's going to happen on my own because I'm going to keep pressing it. But I and think they should look at the totality of what you do as a business owner. You employ women of color. They do most of the writing, most of the social content for the, the brand. You honor black women through the mm -hmm. award show. You've supported black women publicly in the political space like Karen Bass and Kamala Harris. You've consistently shown that you do put stock and value in women of color, specifically black women. So it's weird to me that they feed into a narrative based on a platform of content that you literally don't usually write the content for. Yeah. 
So it's crazy. Well, and the other thing too, I think when it comes to the world we live in now, people look at clips and snapshots of people and sum up who they are instead of looking at the whole thing. Nobody does research these days. Nobody goes and watch a full episode. You see clips, clip go viral, you base everything based on that. And I get it, right? But when it comes to a person at that level of a CEO, somebody who's a boss, I expect more from them. I'm never going to change being honest. I'm never going to change giving my point of view because this is what makes me. I will say the one thing that, and we could take Nini away, the one thing that really I think is problematic is as you start to elevate, you start to think about, if I say this, I'm going to piss off the White House. If I say this, I'm going to pe piss off Pepsi. If I say this, I'm going to piss off the gays. When really the things that are being said need to be said. There are conversations that have to happen. And unfortunately or fortunately, I'm going to be the one to do it. Uh, and, you know, some of that's going to come with some loss or whatever. But it is what it is. Um, I'm going to lose it just like Nene lost that man. <laughs> just want to put a bow on that. Congratulations, Nini. Welcome back to the streets. We missed you. Well, one thing that we didn't miss is all the shade going on with this guy, Babyface, and this woman right here, Anita Baker. Rob, didn't you say you ran to Anita Baker at a? Um, she was she was sipping porridge or she, something. <laughs> no, we were eating ramen. She was sitting at the table next to me. In is she City. like a slurper or is she like a slip a sipper? Because you know some people are like I ain't gonna make the noise. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know. I don't know. I was a little starstruck. So I mean, I love Anita Baker, but you know, Anita Baker is an icon. Let's be yes. let's be let's be very clear about that. She's an icon, but <laughs> they're both icons. So is he. Yes. Period. Babyface and Anita Baker are beefing. I never thought there would be a day where I would say this uh -huh. talented senior citizen would be somewhere online. First of all, her and Dion Warwick need to be removed from social media. I was going to say, no. I was going to bring up They Dion. both need to be removed. Aunt, the aunties need to be removed. I don't even know if they're aunties at this point, but either way, let me just tell you, Anita Baker has now claimed that Babyface hates Beyonce. <laughs> Anita Baker's claiming that Kenny Edmonds hates Beyonce. Now, Let's be very clear. Let me set it up. Babyface was supposed to be a surprise guest on Anita's 15-city tour that kicked off in February. So Anita Baker, as grown as she is, as mature of a woman as she is, is still on tour. Now, mind you, she is, has hits after hits after hits. She's iconic, right? She's actually one of the people that I listen to when I'm getting a massage. You know what I mean? I close my eyes. I let my massage therapist do his thing. It ain't sexual. It's sensual and very relaxing mm -hmm. because she, she has these relaxing songs. Well, baby, she must not be listening to her own music because now she's had it. May 10th. Now, my the 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 tour kicked off in February, but just on May 10th, a month later, Anita had a stop in New Jersey where Babyface was supposed to come out, but he never did. Now he told Twitter that due to technical issues, the show started late and his set was canceled so that uh, the headline Anita, headliner Anita could perform. Let me show you the tweet because I want to show you these receipts. He said, "I am truly sorry to my fans." who have been waiting for us to hit the stage this evening at Prue Center. I was asked not to perform in order to give Miss Baker her space and time to perform her show in its entirety. My band and I are extremely sad and we didn't get to perform for y'all tonight. Heartbroken emoji. Now, he also said, quote, he had nothing but love and respect for Anita despite the incident. However, according to Anita, Babyface's fans, who she says have attacked her for years, began dragging her for kicking him off the stop. Now, here's Anita. So so the fans, Babyface's fans, had some words for Anita. Anita saw them on her Twitter. And she went to the Twitterverse and she had something to say. And this is what she said. The fans said, with all respect, did you call the Babyface a support act? Laughing my ass off. And this is what Anita said. Dearest one. <laughs> this, this is when you knew. Hold on. This is when you knew the, the, the shit was going to go left. Because when you start with some condescending shit like dearest one, go back to the tweet. She said, dearest one, you are not privy to the contracts. Yes, Babyface is a special guest, quote, and hashtag, or slash supporting act on my tour. This false narrative of a co-headliner is creating unrealistic expectations and aggression from his fans towards me. He should tell you guys the truth. Now, uh, let me just tell you, wait, go put the, put the tweet back up. This is when you know you have a senior citizen typing. Why she capitalized the first letter of almost every word. Mm -hmm. 
girl, we don't read like that, but whatever. Now, Anita, who I've heard personally, and I'll say allegedly, allegedly, has been a very nasty, difficult person. I've heard this from people. I've heard she's a nasty person. Uh, very na- like that. Oh, you know how you got that old black grandma who's angry at everybody <laughs> and she knows she about to die. So she just don't give a fuck. That's what I heard Anita be given. And this one else, I knew she was special. I saw her at the Hollywood Bowl. She performs with a, a microphone with a cord. Anybody that don't sing with a cordless mic ain't shit. <laughs> because you got to keep doing this and you got to keep walking around. And she was so annoying me up there. She had no shoes on. And you know, anyway. <laughs> then she tweeted this. As you can see, some of his fans, some of his fans are not accepting of the reality that he is contracted as a special guest support on my tour. Some of y'all even want to hurt me. Crazy town. And then she said this. Good morning to Kenny's crazies who continue to harass. Now, this fan said, Anita Jailhouse Baker, please. <laughs> your ego DMs your light and diminishes your message every time. Hold on. Where? Bitch, you try. <laughs> Put some respect on people's name. That man holds more Grammys than you. I've heard you are a nasty piece of work and no one wants to work with you. Do better, songstress. I, now, see, I, this, I didn't even know that tweet was in there because I haven't looked at the asses. But see, I'm telling you, that's what people, have you heard that? Have yeah, you guys heard? it's the word on the street. That's what the streets are saying. Which is unfortunate. You know, they say never meet your idols, right? Mm. Well, I've never met her. I do. I did want to meet her. I don't want to meet her now because... I was at the gym earlier today and this senior citizen got next to me on the treadmill and he smelled like a senior citizen. <laughs> she looks like she smells like that mean, angry witch that lived on the corner in my neighborhood, you know? And it's so sad because then when you play Sweet Love, you're just thinking of there's no way that melodic voice is coming from such a visceral human being. And she's so, you know, she's just so sultry and she just sways on stage. You just think it's going to be like this love. Well, she sways because she's trying to keep her balance. <laughs> <laughs> well, but Kenny's Crazies is wild. The fact that she that. gave them a name. And this is where you know it's really her granddaughter tweeting. Somebody then <laughs> gave them a name. Okay, well, look, Anita then dragged Beyonce. The Michael Jackson of this era into it. Why Beyonce is somewhere living her best life, touring the world with her daughter, who, by the way, shout out to Blue Ivy, who finally caught the beat. Because her first performance, oh, Blue, I was like, girl, if you don't go sit down somewhere and play tic tac toe <laughs> or Uno. But now Blue is hitting every hit. Yeah, Blue is literally yeah. turned into a Beyonce right in front of us. She looks good. And the girls out there just, yeah, Grammy winning uh, Blue Ivy. Anyway, put some respect on her name too. Well, I'm going to tell you who's not putting respect on her. Mama name. That one. Okay. Anita brought Beyonce into it, and this is what she had to say. He hates Beyonce as well, Kenny Crazies. Anita, this is for you. Bitch, you tried it. And you know what? I'm gonna also give you this one. <laughs> And this one. We well, have the reason, bitch. And this one. I was rooting for you. We were all rooting for you. How dare you? I'm sorry. Um, what do you think? Um, I love me some Auntie Anita, but in the words of another icon, show me the receipts. You can't just throw Beyonce name in this and there's no receipts. Like, you can't put that on baby face because he's going to get attacked by the beehive. Like, where the receipts But at? it's not even a be about, about it being attacked by a beehive. When you have somebody as successful as Kenny Babyface Edmonds, who's done phenomenal work over the years, we're going to just skip past what he happened, what did at TLC. Um, but he's a businessman and people sign contracts. But either way, you know, when you have somebody as iconic as him say anything out his face about who's running music right now uh you know it's kind of it's 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 a, it's a scandal and you know what do you do when something like that happens you come to the jason lee show <laughs> babyface edmonds is coming on my show and it'll be airing on revolt that's what you do and you know i want to know what it was like going on tour with her what her breast smelled like what was the experience what happened with the beyonce how was she drug into it i want to know all the tea and babyface is going to be coming and sitting on my stage to talk about it and i can't wait but also i feel like if you're anita baker why do you care if babyface is a co-headliner or 
You know she had a problem with like, no, it's not his tour. He's the he's the guest star. And can we be very clear? This is not Michelle Williams we're talking about. This is baby face. Right. Yeah. That's what I'm saying. They're both like the goats in their own lane. So it's just really embarrassing. Well, it's gotta go down. And let's Twitter. be fair. Let's be fair. Baby face is a legend. Mm -hmm. yes. And she's a legend. She's a legend because of her age and how long she's been in it. Not for her accomplishments like that. Babyface has hits with Madonna. He got hits that he's created for other people. Songwriting, producing, musician. Anita, we great. You, you, you sway around the stage nasally singing songs that our grandmas used to play. That's not enough, girl. All right. Anyway, Beyonce is somewhere. And Babyface, we're going to give you... No! <laughs> Babyface, Babyface, we'll give you your flower... We'll give you your flowers. All right. Well, we just had this guy, my friend Nick Cannon, on the Jason Lee Show soon. And now here we are talking about his love life again. I want to put a disclaimer up, Nick. I don't want to talk about your love life. I don't want to talk about your relationship with Jessica White. I don't want to talk about anything. However, we're going to because Jessica wrote a whole book yesterday on social media. Now, this is Jessica White and our friend Jessica White and our friend Nicholas Cannon. Uh, who are in a relationship together, and she's been very quiet about their relationship. And we all know that Nick has had ten children since they were an item. Because remember, he had the two by Mariah already, but then he fell in love with her, and this was like his boo boo, like his soulmate. And she said he's his soulmate. He said, soulmate. and then he went and had ten more children with all these other women. And he talked about it on our show about the women and the kids and all that. We know Nick is a great dad, and he's a, a great provider, and he. He's slanging dick and slanging that sway all over America during Christmas time to make sure each kid has a gift. Well, let me tell you what else is slinging. Mud. And Jessica is at the helm of it. She went and wrote a whole book on social media. Now, I'm not going to read this whole thing because it's a lot. But let me first show you a photo of them in happier times. This is them hanging out uh, in different places. It looks like they're both outside here. I don't see that on an island or a yacht, but I'm sure they did that too. Now, they began publicly dating in 2015. That was when I started Hollywood Unlocked. And after, this is when he came, after, this is when he split from his uh, then ex, or his ex-wife, now Mariah Carey. They had an on and off relationship again until 2020. Now, 2021, Jessica came on my last podcast, Hollywood Unlocked Uncensored. We traveled to the backyard of her house, sat up on a couch, some, some, some pool furniture, me, Blue, and Damage, and her. Uh, and we had a whole conversation about their relationship, and this was the first time she broke her silence. Look, had uh, it, it been discovered they had a kid with Brittany Bell, another kid, second kid. Mm -hmm. um, you weren't aware that she was pregnant? No, but she was aware that I had just had a miscarriage mm. two weeks prior to her news coming out because mm. he told me that he told her. Um, and I was living at his house, and she knew that as well. Um, but I found out on Instagram along with the rest of the world. And wow. Did you feel betrayal at that point? I felt a lot of things, which I won't even relive. Because mm -hmm. um, you have to remember, I was going through still her, my hormonal changes, and we were about to start in vitro. Mm -hmm. So, so were... when I came out, people thought like, oh, I was this home wrecker. No, you, there was a real life going on. I was bullied for months with that whole situation because I was still trying to be nice about it. And like, I didn't break up. We didn't break up right away. We were actually still trying to you know, work things out. What was the biggest betrayal? Was it the fact that he was having a kid with this woman or the, fact, the, fact, that, or that the he, fact that he didn't protect you when you were being attacked by people right. for what Yeah, I mean, listen, out? the child was conceived when we weren't together. We had broken up for eight months. I, that's the reason why I didn't, like, flip out about it because right. stuff happens, and I'm a very reasonable woman. For me, it was you know how private I am and you know how sensitive I am and you know how emotional I am. You need to say something. And exactly. he just, he's, he personally handles, he doesn't even really stand up for himself publicly, you know? Mm. Um, so I know how he operates, but it became something where I was like, but you need to do something about it. He stood this. up for himself with Viacom, though. Absolutely, he I did. Very profoundly. Yeah, he so, did. So was he going through that at the same time yes, this was happening? Yes, and I was there with him. So for me, being the lover that I am, I put all that aside and was still there to support him. I, flew, I came, I flew out here to be with him when he was going through all that. But you know what? God sets you up for certain things. And unfortunately, uncomfortable things have to happen for the blessing. That didn't stop anything. It really just embarked me on the journey I was supposed to be mm -hmm. on. It started everything for me. I've never been this happy. 
person I am right now I'm at my happiest and I appreciate all of that happening mm. I really do and I wouldn't change it for anything Nick I now see why you say I was shady because that was a lie that's a lot when you have yeah that's a lot and by the way I hated that beard you're never going to see that beard come back that was just... I was going to say I like the beard I was literally going to say that that's because you like daddies <laughs> I ain't looking at you like a daddy, but trust me, I've seen how you've looked at me in the past. Oh, please. Oh, my God. Anyway, what either way, uh, she talked about their relationship in a very open way and the, the, the fact that she felt betrayed. And, well, we had Nick on the Jason Lee show, and Nick actually talked about Jessica. Look. Expose! <laughs> it was not an expose. It was an interview with, um, with Jessica. Who we love dearly, who is extremely talented, who is the, uh, the beauty is obviously that doesn't even be spoken about. One of the most beautiful women on the planet, but who you were in love with, s still in love with, who I think you're still in love with, yeah. who was even part of season opening of like season 16 or whatever, seven. I can't Man, remember. That girl, like she's you she, were chasing her. Yeah, she's been my muse for a long time. And it's been just white. Of, my yeah, just white. one of the reasons why is because one, that woman has overcome so much and, and it's just a, a light and an angel to, to so many and just operates on a higher frequency. But also when is is sensitive and delicate. So when you have outside influences and people talking and always in your business, that could be like, you, you can't treat an angel like that. You can't constantly put negativity on somebody who can't handle negative. She don't speak negativity. So then when she gets in these settings and you manipulate her to talk bad about me. Okay. <laughs> First of all, because you know she loved me. First of all, so instead of just saying how much do you love him, you gotta say how well, much. Well, because you no, know, she's told me how much she loves you. Okay, <laughs> but that's first, what you should have been sharing. She called with her angel. She was a, literally an angel with uh, Victoria's Secret. Yeah. She's Victoria's her, Secret. her middle name but, is but, actually and, angel. And she doesn't tolerate a lot of drama and mess. And she's not that person. And neither are you, yeah, which yeah. is crazy. But let me but say you this. brought it out of us. No, I I let, gave her the space to talk. Where she said she was hurt was I didn't know she had gone through a miscarriage with you while you were having and a baby her. with Brittany. And that's her. When she shared that, and you know that was, I like I said, when it comes to any of the mothers of my children, those type of things. As someone who has lost a, a, a child mm -hmm. as well, like I, what I've learned. You can't, especially when dealing with a mother, there is no age or stage where you can judge how one, a woman's emotion should be when losing that child. Right. So uh, grievances, people, we operate in different ways. So then when one speaks about that level of pain, you got to be sensitive to that. And that Well, first of all, shout out to Nick wearing the Daily Cannon sweater. I didn't even know he had the Daily Cannon sweater on. He's over on Amp Radio Daily with that. And um, shout out to him for opening up and talking about that because he 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 shared a lot. Well, what do you think about watching the old Jessica White interview besides the fact that I lack production value and uh, <laughs> and the current Nick? Uh, one, I don't think it lacked production value. I thought it was great. And Jessica is just chiseled chocolate perfection. She's so beautiful and she's so sweet and Soft spoken and lovely. Rob, you're gay. Stop with all I the know, bullshit. but I just have to give her. Okay, her she's chocolate and sweet she's and soft spoken. Gorgeous. But you know, <laughs> but I don't. I don't know. It's interesting because was Nick at the forefront of this journey of seeding the world? Because I, I don't know if was she, maybe she was aware of it. Maybe she wasn't. I don't know. But he went on this journey after her, and now he has you know beautiful children everywhere with beautiful women so I don't know I don't know I don't know how much of that journey he had already started to take while he was with her well she she clearly only knew about Brie I mean at that time I don't even think he had all these other children remember he had, he's had, no, yeah he didn't and that's what I'm saying was he already like was he had he made the decision that that was the path he wanted to go I don't know I, did, I, I never asked I don't know so. I feel like Nick has multiple soulmates because later on in the episode he said he would have another he would give Kim another baby but he still Kim loves who, Kim Kardashian yeah, yeah. That's what he said on the show. Well, he don't need to give Kim anything. Just let Kim go. Kim, <laughs> if he ha if if Nick has a baby by Kim Kardashian, I'm moving out of the United States. <laughs> and I could see Kim being petty enough to go have a baby by him now, just so I can get up out of here. But they got <laughs> Wi-Fi wherever I'm going. So. That's just gonna be a tribe of powerful little kids over there. Yeah. No. Um. Well. <laughs> Even though uh, Jessica shared what she thought on the Jason Lee or the last Hollywood Unlocked podcast, she actually pinned an open letter. I would say she uh, pinned an open book about it and she posted on her Instagram. This is what she said. Now, I'm going to just leave it here for a while. Matter of fact, y'all could screenshot and go back and reread it. She basically says she's learned how to love herself now um, and she's more respectful to Nick than she ever was. 
then she's more respectful to Nick than he ever was to her, especially when it comes to public announcements. And during their eight years together, she says that she was his ride or die and that she prayed that he treat her the way she deserved. She says that she felt insanely insecure and emotionally unhealthy in the relationship, which were feelings she had before Nick, but with him it worsened. And she also tells Nick that it's not his fault, but that she did feel that he always put his other women on a pedestal and it drove her crazy. Now, she went on to say that her and Nick were both broken at the time and that, um, you know, he ended up hurting. They ended up hurting each other more. And that's why I say now now that I am like exploring relationships and I go back and forth, I teeter totter on what that looks like every day. I, I'm telling the people that I'm talking to, if it was to become anything serious, we have to go to therapy together because we have to make sure we're not triggering each other's traumas or hurting each other or whatever. And I don't know. You're in a relationship are relationships this complicated? Mm-hmm. Is it more complicated getting in or is it more complicated when you're in it? Staying in it. Really? It's easy to stay in it. Yeah. You Every day you want to be in a relationship and you're like, no, never mind. I'm talking to you no, about I know. being I'm just in a saying, relationship. For people, I feel like for people to get into something, it's like a job, right? It's easy to sign the contract and start a job. But to maintain a job and and try to get promotion and like, you know what I mean? I feel like anything is just harder to maintain. So... Mm-hmm. It's easy to get a BBL, but you got to maintain it. <laughs> but when you're ready to, yeah, but a BBL is fake and a relationship is supposed to be real. So that's Ooh, different. Period. So now when that's you're in a relationship, do you do you ever feel, does the thought of ever leaving a relationship happen? Is it normal to have thoughts of leaving a relationship? Um, or do you get in and say, we're in it no matter what? I feel, I mean, for me personally, when I got into a relationship, I was like, okay, I'm going to do what I can to work on it. But I am the type to be impulsive and be like, fuck you, I'm done, da da da. But yeah, it, it's the thought to, to, to leave. But I feel like you get, should get into a relationship knowing you're going to fight for it. Mm, interesting. Well, I'm still waiting to meet somebody that I actually want to fight for. I haven't met that person yet. <laughs> well, it looks like uh, Jessica wanted to fight for Nick, but Nick didn't fight. Or maybe he did fight to keep it, but just it was too much. I don't know. Because you do get to a point where no matter what, how much you love a person, no matter what benefits come with the relationship, where it it's run its course. Like happiness, especially when you get to 45, you just don't have no time to be unhappy, right? Yeah. Hmm. But also I feel like Nick Cannon is like an untamable man. He just want to He be... was tame for a while with Mariah. Oh, wow. And that's oh. who he said is his soulmate. Mm-hmm. But he said, he did, he did say that, but he said Kim was a soulmate too. He said a million people were his soulmate in our interview. <laughs> okay, but there's a difference between a whole mate and a soulmate. <laughs> but a but I, I feel like he treats all A of these- woman that has a hole who gave it to him, and that's Kim. Mariah is a soulmate. But I feel like he treats oh all of And if you date a girl with muscle, she's a soulmate. I never heard these words. That's just like mate. just like a man that don't have a place to live, you fucking him for a place to live. That's a homeless sexual. <laughs> a woman with too many muscles is a swole mate. <laughs> all right, bye. Good luck, Jessica. I hope you find you're happy. Well, that's it. All the tea that I have to sip and spill today. So now I'm going to give all of you my thoughts and prayers. Have you ever heard the saying that all money ain't good money? Well, that's this week's model because sometimes what you think is for you just ain't for you. And you may not understand it right then and there, but one day you will and you'll be grateful that you took heed. Although he's my guy, you know, Floyd Mayweather, he caught a lot of backlash for participating in the exhibition fight with Gotti Jr. Now, between the melee that broke out in the ring and the half-assed, ghetto-ass performances and even the backstage brawl with that one girl... Y'all know who she is. The whole thing might have been entertaining for some, but it didn't paint our people in the most positive light. I mean, just look at what happened, what came from it. Several innocent people were attacked. Some went to jail, and rightfully so. And like I said, all money ain't good money, even if you got to open up for somebody like Anita Baker. Because them wild ass stories of Anita Baker claiming that Babyface don't like Queen B. I mean, who would have ever thought we hear some shit like that coming from the Anita Baker about the babyface and the Beyonce? This world is so crazy. Now, times are changing and these headlines are getting even wilder, like Khalees and Bill Murray. Who thought that Khalees would date Bill Murray? Ain't he a ghostbuster? Well, hopefully she busts out of those rumors. Like, I mean, what, where, when, how, who? I, but like, it, It'd be like saying Nene went and dated an African after her husband. Well... That happened too. But either way, now she's single. Now, on the other hand, I can understand, like, 
a man got a whole wife who got divorced, but didn't get divorced. But anyway, there's divorce drama. But Nene doesn't need to be caught up in any of that because although she's looking for love, like Jessica, she didn't find it in the place she thought it was at. And Jessica had to go and do her big one and get her word out there because her voice had been silenced. I guess she silenced. But either way, she had to talk about how she had to move on so she could heal herself. And this brings us back to realizing that everything isn't always meant for you or meant to last. Our elders used to also tell us that people and things last for a reason or for a season. You just got to be ready to know when that time is up. And right now, I know it's time for me and this show to wrap the hell up like a condom. Rob, you know what that is, right? Either way, that's it, everybody. Um, that's it. Now, look, make sure that you're downloading this uh, thing here called social media, whatever. Download this uh, a podcast everywhere that uh, podcast stream and make sure that you're following us on social media, everything at, uh, at Jason Lee Show and at Hollywood Unlocked and the only Jason Lee. Uh, make sure you're following it for all the updates. All right, y'all. Uh, make sure you uh, follow us everywhere and that you tune in. Here's my number in case you want to text me, 310-388-6463. Do that now. All right, until then, we out. Peace. Jason Lee Podcast.